Hello. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me here today. I'm very excited. Um, my name is Andrew Fisher. I'm the founder of Quill Technologies, and we focus on artificial intelligence in the financial services industry. Uh, we have models deployed for investment management, uh, for advisory services, and uh, insurance underwriting, uh, to name a few. And um, to, to get started, um, uh, talking about the impact of AI and finance, raise your hand if you have at least one investment account, whether it's a 401k, IRA, or 529. Exactly. And this is why we are so incredibly excited about what we're building, because it literally touches every single person. Now, ask yourself if you would let AI manage your investments. Um, <laughs> what would that look like? <laughs> would you trust it? And, and what would the impact be? Uh, at, at Quill Technologies, we don't think that AI will replace human financial advisors, uh, but we are certain that it will eventually be leveraged by every financial advisor. Um, the impact of AI is, is going to be massive in the financial services industries, and it will be swift. 90% uh, of analytical processes will be replaced by AI in the next three years. Three. I know Phil mentioned the, the speed and the velocity that we're moving, uh, and I, I liken where uh, we're at right now with the infrastructure that's being developed to uh, the Industrial Revolution when you had uh, factories that were coming into play and the impact that that had to productivity. Uh, with foundation models, you're effectively giving everybody a factory to go out and build something, and it's incredible. 50% uh, of uh, forecasting tasks will be automated in that same time frame. Uh, and with 40% uh, of uh, worker productivity increasing with the use of AI relative to those that are not leveraging it, uh, it is inevitable that AI will be integrated into nearly every business process in some way, shape, or form. Now, I've seen this trend sort of progress over the course of my career. I, I started at Bank of America um, almost a decade ago building AI for sentiment analysis uh, price prediction, investment recommendations, and overall portfolio construction. And at the time, generative AI was not a concept that existed. Uh, Phil mentioned the traditional AI uh, where uh, most of the inputs are numerical. Uh, you have small, poorly structured data sets and uh, you know, still a problem that we're dealing with today, but compute limitations. And the impact that that has and the difficulty and challenges that arise with trying to implement AI with those uh, limitations and challenges uh, makes it very difficult to not only gather the data to build a model, to train, test, and validate performance, uh, but ultimately to integrate uh, the AI into the business. And fast forward, you know, six years later, I, I was at BlackRock with a team that was using AI to manage $250 billion, where 85 to 90 percent of the investment decisions were driven by AI. Uh, we ingested thousands of articles a day, analyzed sentiment, identified trends, uh, and used hundreds of individual data points to uh, assist our decision-making process and manage those investments. Uh, it was a very sophisticated process and we were still only scratching the surface. And on the board now are two examples of what that looked like. Uh, on the left is uh, an example of uh, AI that was used to predict the probability of uh, geopolitical risks realizing. And this particular example was used uh, about a month before the Russian invasion of Ukraine and resulted in billions of dollars in averted losses for our clients. So the economic impact of AI and finance is huge. Uh, on the right is an example of how we used AI to better understand uh, the impact that changes in market sentiment and attention can have on asset prices. Uh, again, uh, very impactful uh, from an economic perspective. Now fast forward to today, and using AI is easier than ever before. Um, we sort of break it down into to three steps uh, to, to frame uh, our direction and, and guide us as we, we work on new models. And number one is, you know, what problem are we trying to solve? Uh, number two is, what do we want the model output to be? And three is, how do we manage risk? Uh, because with the challenges and limitations that we experienced a decade ago, um, while those have dissipated, new challenges have arisen, uh, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and so we have to be very diligent about uh, being uh, responsible and ethical with our development and deployment and making sure that we are incorporating uh, processes uh, to manage that uh, going forward. And so using the financial advisor example, uh, what does that look like in practice? Uh, well, what's the problem that we're trying to solve? We're trying to increase uh, 
financial advisor productivity. Uh, because more productive financial advisors typically leads to better investment outcomes, um, better risk management, and better communication. Uh, what do we want the model's output to be? Uh, we want tailored investment recommendations and insights. And this informs the data that we need to go out and gather in order to build the model uh, that is performant and accurate and reliable. Um, and three, how do we manage risk? Uh, at Quail, we've built uh, infrastructure for safe and secure deployment. Uh, and also resources to assist with ongoing monitoring and maintenance, or sorry, maintenance, so that uh, we can align with the rapidly evolving uh, sort of regulatory and, and legal landscape uh, that AI is, is currently experiencing. And we make all of these resources available to our customers uh, so that across industries, you have the ability to not only know that you're benefiting from the power of AI, but that you're doing so in a responsible manner uh, that is uh, in alignment with uh, legal and regulatory considerations. Now what that looks for uh, looks like for our uh, financial advisor AI, QFIN, uh, we benefit from a billion individual data points. Uh, this is something that uh, your uh, most uh, sort of advanced financial analyst or uh, team of analysts simply could not do uh, five years ago. Uh, and what that translates to is historical market data, uh, technical indicators. Uh, it means that you can ingest thousands of articles a day and analyze the sentiment and figure out how to position your portfolio. Uh, we also take into consideration uh, 40 plus individual data points that are linked to uh, each investor's uh, profile, their risk, pro risk uh, uh, propensity for loss, and we take all of this and, and we uh, feed the model and, and it is used by advisors to help uh, manage their investments and increase their productivity and we've seen uh, productivity increases of 15 times uh, for certain processes with even larger uh, productivity gains in some of the, the highly customized models. Uh, and so it's really incredible and uh, I know Will mentioned the 24-7 component of AI uh, but it doesn't need to sleep, it doesn't need a break, it doesn't need uh, you know, food uh, or water, it, it just keeps going and it monitors your portfolio 24-7 um, and gives you peace of mind, challenges, stress tests, manages assumptions, um, so it's really, really powerful. And, um, you know, with that said, I, I think, you know, going back to the question that I asked earlier of, uh, you know, would you let AI manage your investments, uh, knowing the power of AI and the impact that it can have uh, to your advisor productivity um, and its ability to just monitor portfolios 24-7 and, uh, and keep a, a pulse on the market, on the world, and everything that's going on, uh, I would ask, uh, in modification of that, now, would you rather have a financial advisor managing your investments with AI or without? Um, so we're very excited about what we're building. Uh, again, it touches everybody, and um, we uh, uh, yeah, uh, have a long way to go uh, in terms of realizing the full vision, but um, we're, we're making very, very rapid progress, so we're excited about that. Um, so with that said, uh, we're based out of Pittsburgh. Uh, we're very excited to be a part of this community. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible and, and very wel uh, welcoming. Uh, and so uh, we would love to connect uh, and engage and, and figure out ways to, to partner and, and uh, uh, help businesses incorporate AI. So thank you.